Hello, I'm Dr. Nanette Wenger. I'm professor of medicine in the Division of Cardiology at the Emory University School of Medicine. I am a clinical cardiologist and I'm a clinical trialist. And I probably divide my time equally among patient care, among teaching, and among research. Well, I think it's important to realize that there are a number of resources that are already available, that each of the academic research institutions has, including Emory, has essentially stopped the tenure clock for about a year. And therefore, there is not really temporal catch up that's necessary. Many of the research funding institutions, particularly the NIH, but many others, again, have increased the time available. What I expect that I would like the women that I mentor and the women that I have helped others mentor to do is probably as a group with your mentors, set your expectations for the institution. What is it that the institution or the funding agency can do to help you? Because you're not going to be getting back to complete normal immediately. There will be a return gradually to normal. And you will have, depending on the character of your research, to either start anew or to catch up with your patients or your animal models and so forth. So it will vary. But remember, here is where your community of mentors can help and where the mentors outside of your immediate circle can help. But what I want you to impart to yourself and indeed to the others around you is a sense of optimism and the optimism that you in your community can contribute to returning women to research and that you will have an important role in doing so. There are gender-based inequities at work and it is not uniform among women because what I have seen is that the women of racial and ethnic minorities essentially have a double risk of having disproportionate problems in terms of inequity. So that my emphasis to you is first to value yourself. You have come so far, you have had so many accomplishments and women tend to not realize how good they are and how much they are contributing to the domains of patient care. So first value yourself, but then it also is a matter of self-advocacy. And self-advocacy is not standing up and saying, I'm good, I'm great, look at me. Self-advocacy is really defining where there is a niche in the information, making yourself expert in that area. And once you are expert, then people will come to you and you will be the defined resource. Uh, this is probably the best way and it's, it's really an academic way in a sense, so that your accomplishments, your academic accomplishments will advocate for yourself and I expect can lessen the disparities. Hello, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Fincher. I am a primary care internal medicine physician and partner with the Center for Primary Care in rural Georgia, Thompson, Georgia. I am also the president of the American College of Physicians for 2020-2021. So I would say number one, picking the right life partner because I could certainly not have ever done the and taken on the leadership positions that I have without my husband's support um, because it's been critical. 
Secondly, I think um, it is important to when you are asked to take on a position and you see that it is something that you are interested in, by all means, say yes to that, but be able to say no. So one, so several of those opportunities came up for me um, along the way in, as I came up in the American Heart Association at a, a community leadership level uh, to the state level. And then that happened again with the American College of Physicians of taking on little bits, taking on more leadership within the organization of say, saying yes to those opportunities of kind of taking it in bits and pieces. So that was significant in giving me experience in different areas. Third, I would say life events happen. And I was diagnosed with uh, life-threatening breast cancer when I was 31 and just starting off. And so that for me, I can tell you right off the bat that reset my priorities. How do I wanna spend my time if my time is short in this life? And do I want to spend all my time uh, working just seeing patients? Or if my time is short, what is my legacy gonna be to my child, to my practice, if I'm no longer here? And so that was really important to me to think about um, what are the things that I really wanted to be involved in and give my time to? Some of those were voluntary um, times and others were work. I mean, I love seeing patients. So life events happen and the, the big plus about them, even if they're difficult, is they help you realign your priorities of what is really important to you. And I would say with any organization, uh, when, you're, when you're starting in leadership is, you know, this is what I tell my young folks all the time is number one, you got to show up. If you're not there, the rest doesn't matter. And then you got to speak up. And I know for some of us extroverts, uh, speaking up is a little easier, but for people that are more introverted or more thoughtful um, and can write it, um, I envy them so much. Um, being able to provide your perspective on anything that's being discussed. And then next, telling other people that you're interested in these things and volunteering to help. Any leader loves somebody that'll step up and volunteer to do something and then let them have those opportunities to to take on new leadership for themselves. And that's one thing as the ACP president, I've been um, in a wonderful position to be able to, um, to mentor other uh, young, young women um, in all that they're doing. And it's been a fantastic opportunity and one I just have absolutely loved.